Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Austin Belzer from Austin B Media. Uh, I am interviewing Maya and Leah, uh, Maya Cueva and Leah Gallant for the film uh, On the Divide. It's a POV documentary uh, about a, uh, an, uh, a abortion clinic named uh, called Whole Woman's Health and the McAllen Pregnancy Center. Um, and set in, I think, McAllen, Texas. And I forgot when it's screening. That's the only thing I don't know. So welcome, Leah and Maya. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, no problem. I, I literally just got, uh, I think I just got done with it. Um, literally maybe five minutes ago. So, and um, first impressions, um, I really did enjoy it. Um, because I think a lot of um, films that broach uh, abortion versus anti-abortion tend to have a one-sided view of things. Your documentary does not. Um, in fact, it goes at both sides um, at it. And first of all, where did, where did you find all of these people? I, I'm curious about all that. Yeah, so first of all, thank you. <laughs> um, Leah and I have, you know, first met while we were at Ithaca College. Um, and it was there that we came across an article about a traveling abortion doctor who travels from New Mexico to Texas. And we didn't even know a profession like this existed um, and, until we really made our way to Texas um, and saw that clinics were closing. And it was during that time that we actually made our way to the border and saw in McAllen, Texas, that there's only one abortion clinic in the whole region. And so after we finished this short film, we graduated from college and really felt like this could be its own film. Um, and so the three participants that are featured in the film, uh, we really met along the way. So um, there's Ray, who's a Latino security guard there, um, who has been religious his whole life and was randomly assigned to work at the clinic. And then there's Mercedes who went to the clinic a few years ago to get an abortion and was convinced not to. And she becomes you know, like this, uh, the poster child sort of of the, the pro-life movement there. And then there's another woman, Denise, who's the clinic escort who walks patients in and out of the clinic. Um, and so we, we really met Ray as soon as we got there in 2016. Um, he was just outside of the, of the clinic and we really felt struck by his story. Um, and Mercedes, we met about a year later and Denise the same, same year in 2017. Um, and we just, you know, all three of them represent such an interesting um, aspect of this debate. As you mentioned, like we're really focusing on both sides. Um, but for us, it's because we want to show how there's there's very much a gray area um, within this debate um, that, you know, I think a lot of people think of it as like, it's just pro-choice or anti-choice or pro-choice and pro-life, but there's many people who might be in the middle. Um, and at the same time, we're really showing what does choice mean when you have no option? So we really wanna focus on people on the ground um, who are really dealing with this firsthand and not so much quote unquote experts or legislation on the issue. Yeah, for sure. That's pretty much exactly what I got from it. Um, and I actually had something I was thinking about while I was watching, I think it was Mercedes, I think. Um, I'm really bad with names, so this isn't about anything other than that. Um, the woman who gets recruited to the pro-life McAllen Pregnancy Center, we see a section with her handing out rosary beads and, oh, something else. Um, I forgot to wrote it, write it down. And I think one question I had watching the film uh, that it, maybe it uh, offers up, I guess, is what if, what if Christians are manipulating grief to recruit? And I guess I just mm -hmm. want to ask you that question. Do you, do you mm -hmm. walk away from this experience thinking that is a manipulation? Yeah, that's a great question. And like 
Maya had said our approach to this was really to share like a nuanced and um, complicated story surrounding what you typically might see around the abortion debate. And for that reason, um, everything that happens with the people that we're following, we're experiencing it with them in real time. We've spent years with them at this point, um, which I think um, goes to show just how, um, yeah, how sometimes time can be an asset to a film because you can see the transformations that happen and character developments and arcs. So with all of our characters and especially Mercedes, I think that everything that she experiences with religion and the church, um, I think we just want our audience to kind of make up their, their decision on how they feel about that relationship. Um, and um, what we really stress is not to create like a didactic film. We really did want to create a character driven character story being um, priority. And so I would say, yeah, that everything that happened, of course, is, is really did happen. And um, I think we'd love to hear from other folks as, such as yourself and other people who watch the film, how they feel about that relationship. And then, of course, with our impact campaign, we're definitely going to be opening up this dialogue with um, lots of organizations. And we're really excited about starting these conversations, which can be really, really heavy, <laughs> um, but I think necessary at the same time as it relates to the intersections of religion and choice and, and all of those things. And I'm just gonna piggyback off that. Um, I guess my um, reaction to it is just that same thing you guys have been talking about is that a lot of documentaries, I have a certain beef with some kind of documentaries. Um, it took me a while to get back into documentaries because some documentaries would just show one side. Uh, I would always say to my mom, I don't want to watch that documentary because it's coming from one side. I don't want to see one side. I need to see both sides of an argument to make a conclusion. Um, and I guess Backing off of what you said, um, this is going to be, I think, part of the POV uh, selection, right? Uh, P PBS. So you're inherently getting a wider audience. I mean, PBS is pretty much as wide as you can get. Um, what do you think, I guess, what do you think the public would have, like, how appreciative of that is it, because I mean you could have um, um, smaller distribution and but get smaller voice but now you have this big voice with PBS so I guess what do you guys think about that and what um, how does that help your film I guess with such a nationally broadcast station broadcasting this yeah that's a great question we're really hoping that it reaches a wider audience as much as possible. We're really hoping that through the impact of this film that we can you know, create conversations across the aisle, conversations that are not within echo chambers. We're really not trying to preach to the choir or have the same, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, audiences come and see the film and kind of uh, come away with it in the same way they, they started watching it, <laughs> right? Um, so we're really hoping that, you know, this can spark conversations around someone, you know, who might not know how they feel about abortion, right? But maybe after watching this film, they can understand um, about choices, right? And why in many ways, this is really about, again, what I said earlier, what does choice mean when you have no, not many options? Um, and we want for people to be able to see a story like Mercedes and Denise and Ray and you know understand the kind of choices that they had to make, right? Um, and I think people who've seen it already have said things like they really see themselves in Ray and Mercedes or Denise or that they could be a family member, right? And so we, again, just hope that this, this starts conversations, you know, maybe with someone who doesn't know how they feel about it, maybe with someone who might be more religious and consider themselves more pro-life or someone who's very staunchly pro-choice, right? How can we all come to the table and have our conversation about this? Um, so that's really, really what we're, what we're hoping to do and make this less about this debate that's really polarizing and dividing a lot of us. 
Yeah, for sure. I I come in on the religious side of it. So I, I kind of want to like share this when it comes out, of course, uh, with my friends from church and see what their thoughts on it are. Because um, I, personally, I don't think there should be a debate. Um, but I would love to get their input um, on this because I think it is that kind of film that instead of, you know, something like just very one-sided, I think it makes that case of, hey, I mean, the security guard, uh, Ray, um, I believe I've got a quote here. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Oh, shoot. Uh, where he goes to this place to pray and he's talking about how he's got, there's an image where he's listening to music and people are yelling at him. And he's, you see a quick shot of him crying. Specifically, I, I kind of want to get people's thought on just that scene if I had to clip anything out of that, just that one scene, because I think that is the heart of the film is how do religious people feel about this subject, even though, again, shouldn't be a debate. Um, but yeah, um, I think everyone should go out and see this. I mean, PBS, that's about as wide as you can get. I mean, I think even some of the POV stuff from last year, they put online. So um, I think you guys are in the same season with, uh, oh, First Step and all those documentaries, um, which is also premiering at Rebecca. Um, so I guess, just one final question um, is, what do you guys, I'm losing it, but uh, what, what do you guys um, want for the future? And then I guess, where can people catch the film? Uh, you know, I, obviously Tribeca, but I think I got the date wrong. So um, you might want to help me out with that one. It's been a yeah. tip, Tribeca. No, all good. Um, so yeah, our, our film is world premiering on June 13th, this Sunday at 5 p.m. And uh, unfortunately it's sold out, uh, but the online tickets become available that next day uh, on June 14th. And they'll be streaming, you can watch it online till June 23rd on the Tribeca website. So um, yeah, we're excited for everyone to see it and to get more thoughts such as you know, from folks like your own and just, just looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say about the film. Um, and yeah, in terms of like our overall, what we're hoping for, I, I think Maya covered it pretty well with our impact goals. And that's for me, like also very an exciting part of the process is now going into communities and going down back to Texas and other regions to have these conversations. Um, but I think in the meantime, yeah, I would love just for people to um, see you know, how they can shift and change their point of view and maybe challenge that, challenge preconceived notions of what they think when they think about abortion and people who um, are for or against abortion. I want people to think maybe outside of binaries and dichotomous viewpoints. Um, and then also, yeah, there is a lot uh, going on right now legally in terms of abortion legislation and rights. So I think um, we definitely would love for people to be aware of that. And um, the Supreme Court case is taking up an abortion uh, case out of Mississippi. And so I, th I do think this is the right time to have these conversations and especially with people maybe you know, normally wouldn't have them with. Um, and just to have, just in, in our film, having uh, someone like uh, Ray and Mercedes and Denise who all um, have a lot of different varied viewpoints on religion and choice and abortion and for them to be in conversation with each other um, we want to replicate that and um, when the film is is eventually released and, and seen so yeah we're looking forward to hearing from people what they think and and I, I hope it it definitely solicits some really interesting dialogue with whoever is watching it <laughs> um, together families friends I I would love to be an ear in on those on those conversations. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'll make sure. Um, yeah, June 14th, you said? 
Yeah, June 14th is when it becomes available to stream online. Okay, yeah. And then I'll have to look up PBS, uh, what they've got over there. Oh, uh, and PBS, it'll premiere, uh, it'll broadcast in the spring of 2022. We don't have an exact air date yet, but between I think April and May of 2022 is what we're looking at. But yeah, um, I want everyone to check this out. This is one of my dark horses of the fest so far. Um, in fact, I'd actually recommend, I saw a short film last night called Enough. Uh, oh, let's see, what was that about? Let me scroll through my notes. Nathan Nzaga, I believe I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's shot in black and white and has like a musical kind of number, like the whole thing's kind of a musical and you don't expect it to be a musical until it happens. And there's this huge metaphor. I want people to check that out too. Um, but I will have my thoughts up on uh, Austin B Media. Um, and you can check out my other interviews on my YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'd be where it is. And I'll have the audio interview uh, up there as well. If, you, if um, those who are watching this later uh, want to listen instead of watch. Um, but yeah, um, that, that about does it for me. Um, I want to thank both of you, uh, Leah and Maya, for the film, of course, and uh, the opportunity to interview you today. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, no problem. And uh, yeah, um, uh, have a great Tribeca, everyone. Thank you. You too. And good luck with your travels. Yeah, for sure. I might need it. <laughs> <laughs>